YouTube, Happy New Year. We're going to look at some good old die cast. Got some fun stuff over the holidays. Hope everybody had a good one. Let's get into it. Uh, we looked at some pretty cool castings last time. Of course, that's suburban. Everybody's really loving it, and I think it's pretty good too. Hopefully, the ones coming uh, with the new decos are going to look some some pretty good too. I know that the one with the hitch and toe that's going to probably be the next one we'll all see that two-tone one and it'll have the barn doors on the back so it'll look more like a 2500 three-quarter ton truck more than this one that's called a 2500 even though it looks like half ton i found some stuff that was on sale big time sale a lot of times johnny lightning has been going up especially on the pegs couple of stores that still carry these vehicles we're talking about eight bucks on average well, these were down to $3.99. Let's take a look. Wasn't a big selection, but these were cool. I really, really like the El Camino casting because it really was an Auto World Deluxe before it became Johnny Lightning branded. So it's a good 164 scale representation of the 66 Chevelle Malibu El Camino front end. Looks real good. So... These are these project in progress. A little bit heavy handed with the rust treatment. It looks nice though. It'll definitely fill in the layout. You know when you got some cars. Everything usually in my collection is pretty clean. Don't really get too many weathered vehicles. But these are cool. And I really like the casting. It's a great casting. First box I showed you release 4 version A. And then the copyright, so these should be back from 2021, it looks like, so a couple years old. And then here's version B, pretty big production number, 14, about just under 15,000 units. And then they had some other vehicles in that list there. We'll take a little look at these. These are pretty cool. Hood opens, I think. I don't really try to pop these open. Yeah, it looks a little fixed. We won't wreck the hood pulling it. Take a zoom. Let's all take a look at the quality workmanship of the paint job. So, when Johnny Lightning uses these steelies, they actually look really good. Big, thick tires, but not too bad. Again, the casting is great. Good scale on it. Let us see the side-by-side. -side. See which one you choose kind of like them both and I was glad they're about four bucks I was kind of looking on the pegs they had a whole bunch of them from this series and a couple other series unfortunately this cars already had and I didn't really want the triples and doubles or whatever of a lot of the castings it's too bad it wasn't a bunch of auto worlds I probably would have bought them all <laughs> but I'm just not a big Johnny Lightning uh Ollie's people have those around the Midwest especially but I think they're all over the country and that's kind of made its way around the internet in terms of people knowing to get die cast there at a discount. A lot of stores might over order these boxes and and sometimes it'll end up on the shelf. You can see that rocker rust there, it's pretty funny. But pretty good. It's got the primer, missing a headlight. Whole whole nine yards. And actually made it miss a headlight. They actually took the headlight out of the molding. They didn't just paint it black. So it's really missing. The red with the rust looks a little bit more convincing, I'd say. And then we have our black bed. All right. Let's back these out. Let's take a look here. Huh. It's kind of cool. All right. So those will go in the front of the shop there waiting to get worked on. Let's take a look at an M2. So, I love this casting, Corvette Stingray, the race car from the 50s, late 50s, one of 9250, recent release, really cool striking color, uh, I saw it on the peg, and it really struck me with the paint job, so thought I'd get it. I like that it has dark gray wheels, as you can see here. 
can see the chrome bouncing off that turquoise. Got a little dust on it. Hold on. So in person, the, the scale is really good. Try to get this to sharpen. There we go. The contrasting with the white seats and the black interior, it just brings out a lot of detail. And they also have the separate mirrors. Now this is like the Auto Driver series, so it's like their blister pack series. That's really not a heavily packaged thing. It would be good if M2 did all of their cars like that, but not. So these cars will usually have non-opening features and plastic bases to keep the cost down. But the rest of it's all M2. It's got all separate components. So we have the side exhaust and the windshield and the heat extractors on the hood. And this was the predecessor to the C2 Corvette. The 64 or the 63 to 67 car. Rather short-lived body style, but I really like it. You know, the C3 was quite long-lived. The one that came after it. Which borrowed the chassis. So this was cool because it was departure of the C1. So it ditched the solid axle and went right to independent rear and front suspensions. Disc brakes, things like that. So pretty, pretty cool. Kept the, the composite body, of course, with the steel frame but yeah the styling from that car came from this one and there we go i think it had a small block i don't think they're running big blocks in these yet but uh i could be wrong all right back we go now what do we got next well we'll look at an auto world well a couple auto worlds because these are kind of like I like these in my collection. Now, again, I'm not a completist with Auto World. I like to concentrate on the vehicles that I like the most. So sometimes I won't pick them all up. But these are pretty cool. I do like the GT500s that they've been doing, the Shelbys. So I got the orange one. Let's take a look at that. Unusual vehicle, too. I think it had an issue with it. I didn't realize. So these are coming out. Now this is part of the set that's been elusive in terms of getting the new Charger casting. Of course we know about the Challenger, but the Charger is going to be difficult. So this was one of the first six that they released that were all modern vehicles. They had no classics or muscle cars or stuff from the 80s, 70s. And uh, Twister Orange with the black stripe. 760 horse car. Quite a beast. So we looked at this casting before. The only thing I want to talk about on this particular example is the hood is uh, something wrong with it. As you can see, there's a depression there at the end of the heat extractor, and it seems like it's dented. Now, I did see another one of these on the pegs. So I looked at the car through the blister, and the hood seems similar. Now, I got my other cars in the case right now. I'll take them out later. I'll compare them, but it seemed like this car... Uh, had an issue. Now the hood opens and it seems like it was molded that way. It doesn't really look like it was crushed but I don't know. It's a little odd. Engine looks great and I haven't done anything with the wheels and tires and set the offset up and didn't clean up the flashing on the uh, rubber which is typically the case with these cars getting run. But I did do the treatment to the next cast and we'll look at it. We'll look at that in a minute. Just let everybody look at this car in detail. Kind of what you'd expect out of the package. Autoworld does the late model cars really well. In particular, kind of like Mini GT, if you look at the front valence here, very crisp. There's a lot of going on. You know, this is uh, this whole front clip on the car and the hood. I think even the fenders, they're all unique to the, the Shelby version. They're going to be a little bit different. Uh, but especially in the front and it does a really good job now. They don't have independent lensed headlights and taillights They always painted them keeps the cost down. It's fine. Actually at this scale. It's not too bad You know a lot of customizers with matchbox and hot wheels main lines and premiums They end up painting the details in themselves as well because those cars also are molded so and it turns out fine, and a lot of times, if it's a popular casting, you'll notice that you can buy decal sets for the emblems and the headlights and taillights, so you don't even have to worry about painting 
<laughs> which is kind of funny. And we have those really cool wheels, uh, composite wheels, I believe, on some of the versions. I think they're carbon fiber. I don't think the standard it is, but I think the optional wheel is something like that. All right, so nice car. Very, very nice car. That particular chassis of the Mustang is very, very nice. It's bigger than the old car. More comfortable, but it's definitely more sporty. You can feel it in the brakes and searing. All right. Next car, sporty car, and I had a, a a viewer comment below in the last video about the Z car. Yes, it is standard turbo or twin turbo six cylinder. No one normally aspirated at all, like the old version of the Z. Now here's the lineup here. Again, the same pack. Of course, I missed the charger, so we'll find it eventually. I'm sure there'll be a set out somewhere. There's some facts. Now, this is the Hero car. This is the one that was the launch color with the gold wheels, so it was good to get it. I had the blue one. I found the blue one first. I brought it back out so we can compare the two, but this is the first run of the Z. So this car had bent axles. Good chassis, but bent axles. Uh, some Most of Auto World's axles are the barb style. They're not the knurled. There's a knurled style where you can kind of twist the wheels on the axle and pull them off the knurled or the uh, barbed style is really like if you work with fittings and plumbing or something like that or a car vacuum hose you know it goes on easily one way but it doesn't like going off the other but i've learned to work with it now these wheels are plastic of course so you got to be careful and the way i do it especially if there's a tight tolerance is you get a small flat bladed screwdriver give it a little bit of pry but you got to pry exactly against the axle on the back of the plastic you cannot pry on the end of the rim because you'll pull that plastic post in there off of the spokes and you'll just rip the wheel apart so you got to be really careful but you can do it you got to practice you might want to do it with a car that you're not so fond of first but anyway it can be done and i use my bench top vise that's up here in the hobby room and once one of the wheels is pulled off the axle the other one's pretty simple We'll hold the axle in the vise, and then we'll use a small needle nose, and we'll pry off of that, again, against the axle and the post, so we're not ripping the wheel apart. And it comes out. I replace the axles, and I straighten the wheels. I also did the tires, and we took the flashing off the tires. This is a minimal flashing with Auto World. It doesn't be crazy. Most people don't even bother. I do. Now when we roll the car, it's straight. And the backspacing was actually set up correctly on this car, so we don't have to worry about fixing that. A lot of the uh, other cars, especially the domestic vehicles, will need backspacing adjustment with Auto World. As you can see, the front tire looks perfect. A little bit of a hood gap, but that's common with this. They use a kind of a thicker casting sometimes, so you can see the panel gap is a little large. The Mini GT Nissan Z. That has come out recently is a great casting as well. I'll probably pick up probably one example of that in the color of my choice. I think the white looks pretty good, so I'll probably get a mini GT of that. But for the rest of them, we'll do Auto World. You can see the dashboard in there. And then gold wheels. They do a separate plastic piece for the taillights, but they just paint it. They don't really use red plastic. It doesn't look like... But it's nice addition to have a little bit of a separate piece, separate spoiler, and the rest is all molded in. So a really cool car. And we'll compare it with the blue. And the blue I went through and did the wheels and tires on it. And uh, they look pretty good. So it's nice to have the pair. Very, very nice. Let's take a look at that real quick while I relieve my nose. Okay, now, more. Let's look at more. We'll put the yellow with the orange and the blue. Very nice lineup over there. Okay. This was a car that I saw once. Didn't see it for a, few, a month or so, and then I saw another one. And when I saw it again, I decided I needed it. So, Norman Rockwell Series 5. A lot of these cars are kind of 
funny with their graphics. I won't get them. And also, they use some of the older castings in the catalog a lot of times. So now they they allude to what's in the set, but they won't. You know, you'll <laughs> the background is for each car, but they don't. Who knows what car they go to? So unless you're a crazy green light person, anyway, it's kind of funny with the Halloween theme, and we'll notice why in a minute. There you go. I like this because it was really, really a great color. So when these cars were in the 70s, they had these oranges, yellows, greens, things like that. They haven't done the Type 141 uh, like this with the hubcap, the old Volkswagen hubcap wheels, and then the top up. So I thought it was awesome. So it looks really, really good. Really period correct and stock looking. I think they did a great job. Tires are amazing. I not I haven't adjusted anything yet. You can see there's a lot of slop there, but that's easy to address. Separate bumpers. Again, engine in the rear. And when we talked about this originally, you know, it was only in America, only in North America for a very short time. Uh, because of all our regulations that really came and built up a lot of steam in that early to mid 70s period the feds really got involved in how cars were made not only for emissions but for safety and this car would probably do the emissions not a problem but the safety that was an issue there's no rigidity in this body basically if you flipped it over things like that Engine opens up, and there's a fairly detailed flat four in there. You can see the big fan shroud and all the accessories on the back of the engine. And then we have the pumpkin sticker, which, even though it's supposed to be like Halloween, I think it's a pretty funny thing because it does look like a big pumpkin car. Very charming vehicle. It looks really good. Um, and I'm glad to have it. I'm going to clean up those rims. I think that we'll leave this part the chrome, right? Like it's supposed to be, and then we'll go to work and just fill the orange in around that. And then they'll look a lot better. It'll look like the way it was supposed to be. So, awesome VW. Really, really cool car. And uh, it'll get a little bit of work, but then maybe we'll put it on Instagram, let everybody take a look once I, once I get it all tuned up. All right, let's make some room. <laughs> back it up all right this was another car so i kind of not soured but wasn't enjoying really the the composition the color the decos that they've been choosing for the new johnny lightning ford ranger the 80s ford ranger the 82 to like 90 or whatever it was 90 91 so here it is or 80s 9 whatever it is anyway look at this thing so I love the XLS trim. It looks really cool. Now it's got kind of these funny wheels, so we might change that. I might turn it into a four-wheel drive. I thought the silver with the red interior was excellent. They were doing the two-tone trucks, which looked fine, but they're, I didn't like the colors they were choosing. They looked a little off. Now this one looks fantastic. Obviously the, <laughs> the hitch is not is going to go. That's an incredibly inaccurate hitch, so we'll take that off. But the rest of the casting's fantastic. People have looked at these before, but let's look at this one. Now let's take a look at the engine. Now they did the, the I think it's a 2.8 six cylinder at this point, because it looks like they got the V6 in there. I think it was like a 2.8, 2.9, something like that. Cologne. Look at that thing. So just a great casting. Good headlight detail. Small truck. We'll put it up against one of these full-size trucks here in a minute. It's pretty small. But the XLS trim. Now, it comes with an enormous trailer. Probably would have a hard time just towing this trailer empty, but we'll take a look at it nonetheless. Now, this is the old trailer that they put everything together. I took tires off it because I'm experimenting on these tires. And I got <laughs> I think the next car, well, we'll take a look at it Uh Tell you, you can tell me what you think below but this trailer look will look good with my full size stuff and we'll put it up on there I might swap the the black base and put this topper on I kind of like the black and then put the silver with this one 
basically the screws here you can see you just take them out so i haven't done a swap yet but i kind of want to i like the contrast of having this chrome deck on the black so we might do that in a little bit and it comes with ramps so we'll take a look so this one had it, all of them out. Again, that FJ Cruiser, it's a great casting. I just don't like FJ Cruisers. These body styles, I'm not a big fan. I know they're cool. I might get one eventually just to have in the collection as an example of a well-done casting. Because it is a great casting. But I didn't get it yet. So that's green. And then they had the Ranger. And then we have this gold Monte Carlo with like, it's got the Camaro wheels on it. So, whatever. And we talked about that Monte Carlo before. There's the ramps. And they go under the trailer, supposedly. I haven't played with this yet. They should go into that slot in there. And uh, metallic silver. So, kind of cool. Those are about the inexpensive. You get a nice trailer. Although they kind of pile up. You know, you get the trailer because you want the unique vehicle in the front. You got to watch it because... They're on repeat. There's only about five, six, seven of the trailers that they produce, and it only goes so far. So you don't want a bunch of trailers. Probably just need to put a stack of them on eBay or something. All right, so we got some cars out here. Now, let's look at uh, a really fantastic vehicle. And uh, if you're on the channel's Instagram, you know what I'm talking about. So I altered this vehicle, but I have my screwdriver here, and we will show you what it looks like normally. But this is after I fixed it up. I did the stock ride height because I just love this paint scheme. I've wanted this paint scheme originally, but putting all the goofy stuff out first. So we had to fix that, but now I have a real nice 73 3 plus 3 cab C30 two-wheel drive. 454 for the four speed hopefully you know you don't have a <laughs> shifter in there but wow what a rig so i put my fifth wheel um, ball in there and now it'll tow all my trailers fifth wheel i had a bumper hitch on it but uh i was experimenting with bases so i took it off for now but i will show you my other truck what we've looked at just real quick I have a bumper pull set up there i do like the fact that they're using the stock bumper and not the big one so i really like that so we'll swap the base real quick so i can show you what the lifted one looks like but this one is superb it looks awesome with the livestock trailer for instance Let's see if i can get this to so this is one of the trailers just really cool uh and i modified a green light uh topper tamper topper now i had to shorten this part for it to fit and obviously you can see how i hacked that up but let's not concentrate on that because you don't see it when you put it on <laughs> there it is so really really sweet looking setup we have this back on instagram if you want a little bit better picture of it but i thought it looked great and, and it fits all my long bed trucks dualies now so my next one hopefully is i'll get a couple of more and we'll finally be able to build a standard cab eight foot bed dually truck finally square body that looks appropriate not hacked together because god bless them they have guys out there and gals probably that make these 3d models and uh, you know they have the fenders uh i haven't bought any to, to play with it myself but everything i see doesn't look as good as this this actually looks legit. The only thing that's problem is this. The other car I want to build, or a truck, I want to build um, crew cab uh, single wheel one ton. And the only one that makes a normal 8-foot bed is green light. And we know that green light and M2 are completely on the opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of scale. And I'll highlight that with this. I have a bed laying around because I made a uh, utility truck out of the green light front end so i have this bed and if we look at the size of these beds i mean it's not even close it, it's much narrower and when you put this on the cab it's going to be it's not going to even line up so we're going to have to 
we're gonna have to figure something out or wait till m2 does something but it would be nice to have a deeper bed wouldn't it i mean i don't you always need that all right let's take a look at just the package now the car is still in here because again i don't really need another one of these ugly 57s i mean i don't really like that setup it's too modern for that car i think the chassis looks good the anodized uh stacks but i, I don't like the big boat i don't like that so and then of course we got that trailer which if i had to pick that trailer between that and this this obviously lo looks a heck of a lot better than that does so, I mean, they still put the holes in the top. I mean, come on. But anyway, this was out with the Dodge. I know the Dodge is sweet. I think I might try to pick up a loose one of the Dodge. The Dodge was cool. It was a dark green and light green mint, which is an awesome color combination. It was lifted, but whatever. It was really sweet. It was pulling another short bed uh, Dodge. But we'll find it. I should have bought a couple of these because what I want to do is have the slammed one this one and then a lifted one all the same color so i need two more of them basically so hopefully i'll find them 9250 and this is basically and it's funny because you can't find the high you know the, the high people that want like let's say the four runners from hot wheels like the, i saw uh probably 10 cases put out five to ten cases of that new off-road set and not a single forerunner but all the other cars are there in multiples you know so someone just spent you know 100 200 dollars on forerunners or whatever it was for you know it's just it's sad couldn't leave me one i mean to this day and i go around a lot don't have any, any of the <laughs> i don't have the white one the black with the stripe or the blue one the forerunner so maybe i don't need it <laughs> But we'll take a look. Uh, let's take the. Let you look at this while I'm doing this. All right. Let's take a look at this. Now, I did the black one, the one that was slammed. I put the lifted on it. Thought that looked kind of cool. And I did the bumper replacements. I put the small bumpers on it. I think that looks really good. But we'll take it apart. Let's do it. So we're going to take this old girl apart. Now, I will tell you, M2 does an amazing job of lifted chassis because they have the concept where the leaf springs and this eyelet is metal, and then we'll just put a piece of plastic for the axle. So it just makes a really detailed chassis for what it is, you know, because they make a very basic two-wheel drive one. But their four-wheel drive one has a lot of detail. This had a roll bar on it on the bed, which I took off. I didn't like that. Uh, but you get the idea when I put this on. So it looks really cool, but I don't like it as much as the lowered one and the stock ride height. Especially with the with the stock uh, paint job and everything. What was really cool is what I noticed a little bit later was how great they did the, the, um, the tampo work. So we have the correct for 73, how the band comes around and goes around there and back. Later models, it would come out and shoot out onto the fender, but right now it stops there. This was painted solid color. We have the silver outer trim, basically, on this truck. It's kind of the higher trim level. So we have the silver band, and we have the 3 plus 3 call out right there. So it, it was really well done. And let's look at the Silverado badge with the 30 chip paint. I did take the interior part and I painted the steering wheel and the instrument cluster black like it's supposed to be. It's just all one body color. Kind of tuned up the grill a little bit by painting it, but that's just for my eye. And then the back. So we have the running lights that are in the, on, on basically the dualies and the Chevrolet. And then, of course, you can see how nicely done the uh, trim is. So, just a cool truck. All right, let's flip it back to stock, because that's what I want right now. That's how she looks the best to me. Everybody else is different. There's my little pad back there, you can see. This is a magnetic screwdriver, which really helps. But, um, yeah, I'll put a little pad there, and then I attach the, the hitch to it.
there she bees. So this was towing my um, setup for Instagram. Let's put this truck back together before I lose these screws. And I had the green one that I painted that made its debut as well a few episodes ago. I put on the slam chassis for now. I don't know. I, I need to repaint this. I know everybody likes the green, but I got to redo it. It's not up to snuff. And then I got my white one. So these are collecting up. Now, there is going to be coming out next couple of months, month or so. Uh, M2 is doing a two uh, crew cab dually set. They're going to have a white one like this. That's standard ride height. And then they're going to have the, uh, the kind of that striped up one. Like the Desert Fox type of stripes on a dually. So it'll be black with the gray stripes. Uh, crew cab slammed. So that'll be awesome. That's a two truck set. We're going to get that one for sure. I really like these trucks. I just really hope they make a, a two-door. Uh, I'm going to make one, but I want them to make a two-door, and I want them to make a crew cab uh, long bed single wheel. Now, last one. I'll do my setup real quick. This had a hitch on it, just uh, but I had my had my boats with that. What a, what a camping trip, huh? <laughs> All right, we'll put our duallys over here for now, just to have them at the shop. There they are, hanging out. Um, we'll put this right here. This came in the mail. Kaido House cars from Mini GT are awesome, but uh, this is probably a little distracting. Let's let's move this a little bit. Put this over here. So I found this one was the most appealing to me. I didn't like the red. There's a lot of graphics on these. I mean, it's not my thing. I do like the graphics, but I don't like all the the, the uh, decals and stuff. But this was this was cool. I mean, this is my first Kaido house. Uh, they've been out for a couple of years, three years. Uh, we got the dots and wagons, the lifted wagons. We got the all the, the Sylvia, the S, the S Sylvia S15, they got the uh, Nissan GTR, the R34, uh, all that stuff, right? Um, but the, the square body, so they're going to do a dually, slam dually, and then you're going to have the, uh, <laughs> which is a regular cab, uh, it's kind of funny, but it's too, I mean, it doesn't, it's not like the M2s where you can play with them. You got to leave these kind of alone. Limited edition awesome box really really cool box um i left the plastic on it the truck's out already but this is a cool surprise this is kind of like m2 so what are they calling this 80 something i mean that, that front end's like an 83 something like that all right we looked at it right i looked at the box woohoo let's look at the truck so this scale, this truck scale is kind of like a green light scale. It's, it's smaller than M2. And it's close to Auto World. But it's a cool truck. It looks really, really cool. And I'll do another cool setup here in a minute with it. But really beautifully opening up hood. The pearl white paint. It's got like a, a six liter in there, whatever, LS, 6.2, whatever, whatever. It's twin turbo, whatever you're using, 5.7, who knows. And then you got your uh, Kaido 10. Using the Chevy rallies, but they're, you know, built rallies. They got a different rim on them, size. Uh, but... I was kind of excited because when you look at this, it's using the Chevy uh, hubcaps. Well, they didn't use the Chevy hubcaps. They just they did the rallies, which looks fine. And it's got the side exit exhaust. And, of course, it has the purple blued. Looks like it's heat-treated base. 
It's kind of got that going on. Super low to the ground. The hitch, I uh, put this in my pocket, and it, look at that. Bent the hitch up. So I, I think I might take the hitch off. But they made this engineered to roll, you know, flat, like the like the uh, Hot Wheels uh, uh, Nissan hard bodies that are slammed. They, they, you know, you have to have a surface like this to run them on because if there's any bumps, they're going to scrape. Cool chassis, of course, pro chassis. 83, yeah. I thought so. Now, in pictures, the silver around the window is kind of funny because I don't think they have the trim that goes up here. Uh, but whatever. Kind of see the pearl paint in this zoom. And we got the cutout in the bed. So this is probably the best bed, you know, for a slam truck. You know, they'll do this. I like this rather than raising the whole bed like M2 does. But, of course, these trucks are double the price. But it rolls awesome. Very, very cool. Slicks. There's no tread pattern on them. It's almost like a race truck. Grill's really good. Really, really cool truck. Separate bumpers and all that. Um, tailgate is good. Works fine. Uh, there's a tiny bit of flashing on the edge here. So, even when I push it, it's a little, needs a little adjustment. I don't know how much I'm going to do, just because, that's, this is more like a collectible than it is to play with. I mean, I like it. I want to play with it. You know, it might become a pocket truck and we'll lose, we'll ditch the mirrors. A lot of times what happens is, uh, I'll cut the mirrors off. I'll cut the mirrors off and I'll put them away in the box. And then, you know, if I need to reattach them, I will. But, uh, yeah, they'll definitely get ripped off if I hang out, especially the, this, the hitch. So I might take the hitch off gently. I'll probably be able to separate it there and then, you know. But that's, again, we'll see. It's cool. Now, this is a setup I'm thinking about. Let's use my uh, gooseneck here. I'll put the old girl on that. <laughs> that looks good. Got to close the bed. So that's what I got so far today, as of now. Um, bigger scales, too, we might look at. I don't know. I always say that, but never get to it. There's some tractors. So we'll see. But... Very, very happy to have the brown and tan. Hopefully there'll be more two-tone trucks. I'm sure there will be. I mean, it just looks fantastic. Uh, M2, if you follow them on social media, they released the fact that they're going to do a crew cab dually Ford OBS. So that 87 to 90, 91 body style truck, they're going to do that as a crew cab like this, basically. So that'll be cool. I, I hope, I really hope to find um, these wheels and tires and, and chassis and, and multiples because I really like this setup. Now I have the green light Dodge Dually uh, regular bed, but it's all tore apart right now. So we'll, we'll take a look at that truck next time. I thought we'd get to it this time, but we'll look at it next time. Uh, we've seen it uh, on this one. So I'll give you, you know, we've looked at this. It just has the regular bed and we'll go over that in due time i'm still working out the chassis on that truck and also the tire choice i really don't like the stock tires uh, we've talked about green lights bigger truck tires are awful hopefully they're working on correcting the mold it's been ever since those tires came out for many years they've been wrong so hopefully we'll get that fixed hope everybody's having a good new year so far thanks for joining me it's been a pleasure to show cars to you and trucks Hope everybody finds what they're looking for out there and uh, more to come. Now, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, put a thumbs up, and make a comment. It helps the channel grow. Uh, we've been growing a little bit stronger recently. We're going to try putting out more videos so everybody has something to stay tuned to and also not forget about me. I'm still here. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, more to come. Always looking at great cars. Hope everybody's doing well. Thanks for watching. Till next time.